Hello beautiful people, it's the Five for Doctor. Today we're gonna to be doing something a little different. I saw this video on TikTok and I thought it would be a perfect video to show you guys and kind of talk to you guys about this phenomenon or this ailment and break it down for you. So let's get into the video. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Show, the Fly for Doctor. I'm a foot and ankle surgeon and podiatrist out here in Houston, Texas. If you're new, welcome. I hope you stay till the end and subscribe, like, and share this video. Now let's get into it. All right, so I was scrolling on TikTok and one of my lovely followers tagged me on this video and it is from The Karenson Show. I'm gonna be watching it on my phone but I'm also gonna project it on here so you guys can watch it as well. It is about this patient that has this interesting appearing lesion on the bottom of their foot. Now when I saw it, I knew exactly what it was at first glance and turns out they've also apparently featured, because I was thinking, hey, this patient needs to come see me. I know what to do with this, but I think they may have gotten some help already. I'm not sure. But let's just watch this video and let me break it down to you what's going on. Oh man, what in the, what is that? Hello everybody. I gotta do this for my surgery. So he tagged this the world's oh, most no. deadliest feet, which I think is super hilarious. It's nope. not the deadliest feet, but if you are not used to seeing that, I mean, I'm saying this, of course, because I'm a foot doctor. All I see is feet all day. I don't want them going in there, seeing my feet with no damn calluses on them. I gotta cut them down. I gotta let my son soak them. You see that big knot on the bottom of this? Ooh, we, uh, I'm about to, uh, I'm about to get, uh, I'm about to throw up. Oh, God. All right, so here I'm gonna pause. If you're going to see a foot doctor, they have <laughs> seen it all, okay? They've seen all kinds of foot stuff. Whatever it is that you think you're bringing in that's new, they've seen it. I mean, there are only a few things that I personally have not seen. So you don't need to soak your feet before you come see me. You don't need to trim your calluses or trim your nails. As a matter of fact, I want you to leave them as they are because that allows me to evaluate what is really going on. I can understand how it looks, what it looks like, what it appears like, and how bad it can get. So if you mess with it before you see me, then I'm not seeing the whole picture. So just like you don't have to do anything before you visit any of your doctors, you don't have to trim your calluses or your corns or what he calls tree stumps before you see your foot doctor. Ooh, we. Yeah, that's the oh, way we get it off. Oh God. I'm about to do my receipt. Baby, y'all gonna see a big difference in my feet. Oh, wow. I can't wait. You got debris, a debris stub, a tree stub. That look like a tree stump. I don't know what that is. Yeah. You got a tree stump growing outside your foot. Let me see it. Get that oh. broth. That clean water gonna come broth. Put some it's gonna, in here. It's gonna become broth. Put some down in here. I mean, sauce, like sauce meat. Sauce meat. Ooh Look at them toes. Them claws. Put that foot line for that Them slave claws. Them feet ran away. Them Harriet Tubman feet. Not Harriet Tubman. Tubman. Put them in there. Submerge them feet. Now, why we gotta do our people like this? Like, come on. Not Harriet Tubman <laughs> feet. But anyways, the fact that she has really long toes and he called them claws, um, I suspect that she may actually have nail fungus. Now when you have nail fungus, it lets the nail, be makes the nail become thick and really elongated and really difficult to cut. And so patients that actually have these long to toenails, they do want to cut them, but a lot of the times the regular clippers that you get from the beauty supply store or the pharmacy, does not work. As a matter of fact, it does not it does not even open wide enough to cut it. So you have to see a specialist like myself, someone who takes care of it and someone who can dig in them and has special equipment that'll let it kind of really, really get into those toenails and really cut them. And which is kind of in conjunction with what it is that she has going on. This guy is super <laughs> hilarious, I must tell you. Wait a minute, don't do my leg. We're gonna use that Dawn. If it help the ducklings, the little ducklings. It will help my feet. It's gonna help her feet. So I'ma do a little splash. I'm gonna do a little drizzle on. No, 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 no. That's enough. Oh. Since y'all requested. Alright, I am not sure what the logic is behind the dawn soap. 
But we know we love Dawn. I love Dawn. I mean, we use it at home. We even put it a little bit in our whites, the blue one, to kind of give it a little bit of a sparkle and shine. But I personally definitely, from a medical standpoint, will not advise you to use Dawn dish soap to soak your feet. I don't know that I have seen in any medical journal or literature that this helps to maybe soften the callus or soften the toenails. I'm guessing she used it or wanted to use it because she wanted the foot to be clean, which I understand, but do I agree with it? Absolutely nope. not. No one's asking my opinion now. This is just me putting my little two cents into this situation. And I'm especially for my patients that are not di uh, that are diabetic or have blood flow issues or have a wound, I definitely will stay away from using things that I just, no, not just so, absolutely not. Since y'all requested, I couldn't get no Listerine, boy, that shit was a little high. I got some mouthwash, you know what I'm saying? What you got that for? Huh? This right here, this right here take away all that, what they say? Anti-fungus, all that fungus shit. Damn, you got bubbles coming yeah, out there. I, that I told you put too much in here. <laughs> you got bubbles. Damn. You got bubbles coming out there, ho. Damn. Anything could help, huh? Let's see what this do. All right, can we talk about the foot things that are on the side? Like, they are ready to go to town. I can't wait to see what the contraption that they have on the floor there is about to do. Like, this is so interesting. And I'm gonna see how he's gonna use this mouthwash or Listerine now. Listerine is one of the things that are that is advised that you can use for a fungus. Now, in my opinion, it is it doesn't hurt. It's anecdotal, meaning that there are no scientific studies or medical journals or literature that says you can use Listerine. But there are people who swear by it, old wives' tale that Listerine can cure fungus. Now, as thick as this patient or this person's toenail may be, I do not believe that this Listerine will help in this situation. Now maybe in a very, very mild situation, perhaps it could have some antifungal properties that I agree with. Um, but in this situation where it is super thick, it's super dystrophic, it's, you know, looking like claws, uh, I don't think that it'll work. But you know, sure, any fungus that is around the foot of the skin, it may definitely take care of it. Anything could help, huh? Let's see what this do. Put a little bit in No, put a little sprinkle that shit on my damn legs. Oh, put a little more, put a little in there and get you right. That shit needs to boil. Oh, mm. that's Take stupid. all that. I need to do a little more. Man, don't do no damn more, that's enough. That. Oh, yeah. Let these folks know, cause these folks think, think you got diabetical feet. Oh no, I ain't no diabetic. They think no. you they think you they think you diabetical. No, I ain't diabetical. Yeah. <laughs> no. Now, like I always say, it is important that if you are diabetic, not diabetical, <laughs> if you are diabetic, you go see a foot doctor or a podiatrist or a foot specialist like myself or someone in your area. You definitely don't want to be creating this concoction if you are diabetic or diabetical or have blood flow issues because you could really cause some serious damage and this could morph into something bigger and we have to do bigger surgeries and things like that and we don't want to get into all of that. So if you're diabetic or you haven't checked, make sure that you're checking with your doctor, your senior primary care doctor, so that we can take care of it and take care of you as soon as possible. Take all that uh, scales and uh, dry skin and fungus, fungi about your feet. Hell, I hope it make a minty, cause that's the minty kind. I hope that, I hope that, that, that water, that's sauce, that's sauce. You know, like sauce meat, sauce, that's sauce water, block water. Ow! Oh, sorry. Ooh. Oh, God. Oh, hold up. Hold up, hold up. Oh, what hurts? What hurt? The bottom of it. What the bottom? Stop it, Michael. Oh. Good. She got a tree branch growing out that thing. Now, seeing this, this is, I am 98% <laughs> sure that this is a cutaneous horn. I leave that 2% just in case it's something 
awry or crazy that we haven't heard of. But I may even push that to 99% sure that this is a cutaneous horn. Now, what is a cutaneous horn? It is essentially an excess buildup of skin or a super duper mega callus, okay? It's a callus that had built up and built up and built up. It is literally a symptom of other things. The most common thing that it usually is is what we call acnate keratosis. Acnate keratosis. Now, a cutaneous horn is not a specific diagnosis. It literally is a reaction due to other things. A lot of the times it happens in sun exposed areas, but it could happen anywhere in the body. Like you see in this patient, it's happening at the bottom of their feet. It's essentially, like I said, excess buildup of skin. However, sometimes it could be hiding something at the bottom of it and you definitely want to expose it do a biopsy to make sure because if it's hiding something like some sort of um, skin cancer, you want to be able to find out on time and give it appropriate treatment. And that's why you don't want to be messing around with this on your own at home. You want to make sure that you see a foot specialist or a podiatrist like myself. Now, I did mention that you see an actinic keratosis, and this is a type of a skin disorder that is technically a precancerous lesion. Now, not all cutaneous horns come from actinic keratosis, but a large and majority of them do relate to actinic keratosis. And the reason that this is important is, like I said, it is a precancerous lesion that if you don't take care of it, could lead to squamous cell carcinoma. Squamous cell carcinoma is a type of skin cancer that can happen in sun exposed areas where you have this build up of skin. So see a dermatologist or see a foot doctor if it's in your foot so that they can diagnose this with a biopsy and get you treated as soon as possible. Bottom. Stop it, Michael! Oh. She got a tree branch growing out that thing. Oh my god, don't touch it. So That's a little shit like a walnut. Oh god. Yeah, take it off with this first. Take it off. See? Don't pluck it hard. Do it. What you mean? That shit too thick. Oh, this shit coming off of it. Gee, oh, shit, crud. Come on, oh, boy, get back hard. oh god. Hurry up. Oh god. Right. We gotta let a professional do this. Oh God, listen. Wait a minute, Michael. All these bubbles coming off your lips. Cut that out. Listen. I don't want to touch. Well, you get you're doing a good job. See my mama. We gotta go, you gotta go. They say go to the podiatrist. I ain't going no, I ain't going nowhere till I go have my knee operated on. You gotta go and, to the podiatrist. And then I can go to the podiatrist where they can put me to sleep. Come on, Michael, cut listen, him off. Listen. So first off, the son had a great, great idea. Yes, you need to go to a podiatrist, a professional, like I've been saying, to take care of this, okay? And she did make a good, good point. She said where they can put me to sleep and cut it off. The reason that's a good point is this is super duper thick. When you come to see me in clinic with something like this, like he calls a <laughs> tree stump or a, you know, a, a piece of God knows what, it's really hard to completely take this off without causing pain. You saw how she was in pain and in discomfort, and that's because, again, this is a top layer of the skin. Your skin has sensation, my skin has sensation, everyone's skin has sensation. And so something that's as thick as this will cause discomfort, and trying to cut that all down in clinic, I, I mean, it's gonna be really hard. It'll take several visits, and they do it in several layers. Now, my preferred choice is to just excise the entire thing. Cut it all out and send it out to the lab. Again, because of my concern, I want to make sure I take it out as much as possible and send it to the lab so they can do a diagnosis under the microscope and look at the pathology and make sure that there is no pre-cancer or there's nothing going on with it. Come on, take it easy now. I'm this is not for the weak hearted, you hear me? You gotta, you gotta be strong hearted for this, you hear me? Go ahead. Oh shit, this shit look like Parmesan Come cheese. Come on, Michael. This shit look like grated parm. I mean, it, it, this shit look like the Parmesan cheese Come on. Olive Garden be doing when they be grinding it up on your lasagna. Oh God. Ooh. <laughs> Kara Show, thank you so, so much for this exposure. We really appreciate you and are humbled that you chose to share your mom with us and help to educate the public. I really, really appreciate it. 
If she was still in pain and still having this, I will invite you to my clinic to get this taken care of free of charge. As soon as I saw it, I said, you know what? I can totally take care of this. This is actually easy. This ain't nothing. But um, I hope that you've gotten the help that you deserve. I hope you've gotten the help that you need. If you have any questions and I'm reaching out to you specifically, give us a call, 832-415-1790 and refer to this video and we will take care of it for you. If you have any questions, let us know. If you're new to this channel, I'm the Fly for Doctor. I'm a foot and ankle surgeon, doctor, and specialist and podiatrist out here in Houston, Texas. If you want to see me specifically, check the link down below and I'll give you the information, our address, our phone number, and our website so you can book an appointment and consultation with me. If you're new here, would you consider subscribing? I'll really appreciate it. It helps the YouTube algorithm pass this message along to every and anyone that may need it. Also, please share this video with your friends and family. We would really, really appreciate the exposure and the education about it. If you want to follow me on other platforms, it is The Fly for Doctor on TikTok as well as on Instagram. Of course, it's The Fly for Doctor here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Till next week, we'll see you later. Bye.